Hi and welcome to chapter 4 of our 5G radio planning concept. In this chapter, I am going to teach you how a coverage simulation basically happens in a any planning tool, whether it is at all asset or planet. So basic fundamentals of how a planning tool basically operates and work and the workflow is what we are going to do here. In this chapter, we will also learn about the static simulations and Monte Carlo simulations or the dynamic simulations, what exactly it means. So uh, you need to pay full attention because this is a very favorite topic for anybody who would be asking you questions on uh, the planning in interview specifically. All right. So first of all, let us see what all are the inputs required in a planning tool. Inputs required in a planning tool. So first thing that that is required is the the map data right so let me put them one by one the very first thing that is required is map data now map data has got various things one of them is called as the height files these are basically contour height files which will tell you the amsl values at different points so the map data is basically defined by these files and these are the most important files because they contribute directly into your propagation calculations right so how much signal strength you will be expecting map data or the height files of the map data will play a very important role after that next is the clutter files map data files in um, planet is called as grd grid determine and the clutter files are called as GRC grid classification. So as the name suggests classification, it will tell you about dense urban areas, urban areas, suburban areas, rural areas, open areas, industrial areas, airports, water bodies, etc. So this will basically tell you the classification of the land. Usually if you see directly they don't contribute because it is just they don't contribute in the calculations directly because they are just a file with this classification in it but the propagation models which we are using in the planning tool they have options to add the height in the clutter and they also have an option to add the fade margin or shadow fading margins per clutter wise so that means clutter is the second important height file or map files which is going to contribute in your propagation calculations. Then we have vector files. These are simple tab files of your map info which will carry the information about major highways, state highways, river bodies, coastal lines, airports, etc, etc. So using the height file, using the vector files, you can identify the areas of major interest, like these roads need to be covered properly. Right? If there is a highway, we need to put highway antennas there. If it is a open, you know, uh, uh, hotspot areas they need to cover it better right so these are three major files which are used everywhere in all the different technologies whether 2g 3g or 4g with 5g because we are going to talk about a lot about the higher frequencies or millimeter wave range so in that case the building vectors or building files along with the vegetation vectors will become a very vital inputs in the map data itself. So these are buildings. So how much is the building height? You can add to it. 
the vegetations right where you will see high dense vegetations where you will see low dense vegetations open areas etc will also be important so this is the first input that is needed or required in a planning tool after that the next input is your configuration files now what do i mean by the term called configuration files for example how is your planning propagation models which are defined so propagation model ray tracing models propagation models standard macro cell ray tracing 3d models etc are the things which are required so you need to know about your propagation model you need to know about your equipment files that means which type of antennas what base station base stations antennas feeders jumpers etc you are using in your base station so every single entity which is going to contribute either as a gain or as a loss that means your link budget values also need to be included in the planning tool as the form of configuration files which will also include nowadays your frequency band information your frequency bandwidth information etc then we have the traffic files this is also important the pro population map which is also known as traffic and the interference matrix if you have so these are optional information your interference matrix can be added your traffic files could be included plus finally the most important and vital information is your nominals where exactly are you trying to plan your sites so if you have nominals you can place your sites on the nominals or you can decide on your own for identifying a useful area and putting the site there then identifying a useful area and putting a site somewhere else so this is how a normal inputs required in the base station let's now look at the workflow for 5g rf planning so basically if i am going to design a 5g site which all are the important factors that i need to consider while doing the rf planning this is what we are going to learn now the very first thing is you need to define your frame structure i hope you still remember chapter 1 we discussed about the subcarrier spacing we discussed about the frequency bands we discuss about the carrier definitions so so first thing is you will define your frame structure whether you are using tdd or you are using fdd and in tdd if you are using which tdd downlink to uplink specifications that you are having so those are some of the informations that is required in the frame structure type of information some of some of the inputs required in the frame structure would be the numerology or the subcarrier spacing that you are using the numerology which you are using in the network which will leads you to what is your subcarrier spacing whether you are using 15 kilohertz 30 kilohertz 60 120 then what is your bandwidth right whether you are using 5 megahertz of bandwidth or 400 megahertz of bandwidth then what is your synchronization signal block configuration where exactly and how many your pss sss and tbch are located what is their periodicity etc and then the if you are using tdd frame structure so what will be the downlink to uplink ratio so these are some of the things which you would be requiring as an input for the frame structure definition in the tool and you need to know all this information from your project so that the same information can be input in the planning tool after the frame structure the next is the definition of the frequency bands so whether you belong to fr1 or you belong to fr2 what is your duplex mode right duplex mode 
which is FDD you're using, or you're using TDD, or you have a SUL band, or you have a SDL band, supplemental downlink, and supplemental uplink. I hope FDD and TDD is clear to everybody. So FDD is frequency division duplexing. That means you have one uplink frequencies, one downlink frequencies. In TDD, you have same uplink and downlink frequencies, but the time slots are different, which will define uplink and downlink. In supplemental uplink, you will have only uplink, no downlink. That means this is going to be a supplemental carrier. There will be one more carrier which is giving you the coverage. This is only enhancing the uplink coverage. That's it. Similarly, you have a downlink, supplemental downlink, which is used for the purpose of carrier aggregation. Then we have uh, the carrier definition. These will define the carrier frequencies, right? or in actual words, your ARFCNs, your GSCNs, etc. Or if you have any filter attenuation, etc. So that information will be present there. So this is also a very important input. So how many carriers you have, whether you're using carrier aggregation or not, which is going to be your primary carrier, component carrier, which is going to be your secondary component carrier. So all those kind of informations, you can add it in the, the, the carrier definition. Next, after the carrier definition is the advanced antenna system, right? Some people call it as advanced antenna system. Some people call them as active antenna systems, one and the same thing. So, so basically the definition of your antenna, what kind of MIMO that you're using? Are you using a single user MIMO or you're using a multi-user MIMO? Are you going to use spatial multiplexing or you're going to use transmit diversity, right? That means whether you are going to increase the throughput using MIMO or you're planning to increase the coverage from the MIMO is what basically you will need in this information. So important thing is these are directly importable files, right? So whichever antenna type you are using, let's say I'm using RMS antenna or I'm using, let's say Nokia's uh, active antenna system, which is known as RAS. So these RAS file can be directly imported. You can go to the specifications of that antenna and those antenna files can be directly imported in the tool or you can create them by taking important information. What is the, uh, the beam forming gain, etc. So that information, it will simply come from the templates or from the configuration files. Okay, once you are defined with your frequency information, your frame structures, your carrier information, your antenna informations are there. After that, you create the site database in your network. It starts with creating a template and then manually placing the sites in a geographical areas. You can choose a template of 0, 120, and 240 degrees with a given type of antenna, given type of base station, given type of antenna heights, etc. And then using the map information itself, you can place important clutters and place the sites one after the other throughout the area of the interest. Or you can directly import a nominal plan and place your templates on the nominal plan that directly import functionality is also possible in the planning tools. And after that, you can manually tune the azimuths, the height, right, which is bigger, which is smaller, or you can change 
any kind of BTS power because this is micro. So this will not transmit at 20 watts. This will transmit only at five watts. So that kind of information you can use as an input in the site. And once the sites are created, after that you need to run the coverage 